Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to Prague Chess Festival 2020. This is another strong festival this year. And uh, let's see the list uh, who gonna play in this festival. So um, the highest rank player is Jan Krzysztof Duda from Poland, 2755. And also we know already Nikita Vitugov and Alireza Firuzia uh, who played in Tata Steel um, tournament in Wagen Z already. And um, the other players in this tournament, Vidit Gujarati and Hari Krishna Pentala from India and David Navara from Czechia. So these players are um, above uh, 2700 ranking. And we also have David Anton, Samuel Shanklan, Markus Rager and Nils Grandelius. Uh, who are just slightly uh, below 2700 um, ranking. So uh, definitely strong tournament and uh, I would like to show you first the game from round one where and it's the best game um, from this round as um, Vidit Gujarati got the award from the from the organizer and here is the picture. So um, Gujarati got the award for the best game of the round one this is this is why i'm showing you that game and uh, who is vidit gujarati he's 26 years old player from india and his ranking is 2721 so he is the number two in india just uh, behind uh, vishwanathan anand and 26 uh, in the world so um that's quite strong player and samuel shanklan 29 years old uh, grandmaster from usa he's ranking 2683 and he is world uh, 53 um uh, ranked player so v did play as white and samuel shanklan as black let's see what happened on the board we have d4 by Vidit, knight f6, answer by Samuel Shackland, and c4, e6, knight c3, and bishop b4, so Nimzo Indian defense on the board. We have e3 and castle. Uh, and here um, the most popular move so far, bishop d3, knight f3, knight e2, or even a3 uh, forcing uh, the bishop to exchange for for the knight but here we have bishop on d2 uh, which is quite not it's not no novelty but it's quite um you know popular and uh, nowadays and um, this is quite you know trendy uh, so a lot of players play that move and here we have b6 and um, the theory of course knight f3 bishop b7 and bishop d3 d5 by black and c takes on d5 e takes on d5 and rook on c1 so pretty normal development rook e8 so uh, placing the rook on the semi open uh, e file and so far everybody in this position uh, of course in the top level play um, the castle and then the plan for black is usually moving the bishop on f8 or maybe a6 that's the plan and a6 then it's uh, white actually can't play uh, with the knight and attacking on c7 so um, that's usually the plan in this position however um, we did, didn't castle he play knight on b5 and it's quite new move and it's it's i think it's a preparation for and uh, this tournament uh, as now there is the problem because bishop is under attack and also this pawn on c7 is also under attack so um that's quite some uh, problem for black so uh black has to decide what to do uh, knight on c6 was played so defending the bishop and actually this bishop shouldn't be taken because it gives nothing um, for white uh, black would just simply take and this pawn now can't be taken because uh, after check we would have queen on d3 and now rook on c8 winning um, this minor piece uh, so uh, that's not good uh, stuff for white 
So uh, we did play a uh, castle in this position and here we have bishop on f8. And now this novelty, it looks like it don't give much to white, but actually black are, you know, out of the book and have to think what to do and how to improve the position. And for example, it's really not convenient to have um, the knight on c6. Uh, knight usually in this position is, you know, developed on d7 a3 and a6 kicking the knight knight c3 and bishop on d6 so uh bishop make quite a way uh, but now it's uh, you know going to this uh, active diagonal and now we have b4 knight b8 so um, knight has to be moved of course to d7 and here queen on b3 uh, and here we have c6. c6, it looks very strange uh, as he's blocking the, the bishop, uh, but there is some plan because uh, usually in this position black would have the plan knight b on d7 and, and then after moving this, um, this pawn, uh, the knight actually can try to get to c4 and that would be very, very strong outpost for the knight. Uh, and um, the problem is if knight b on d7, but it's still um, the best move in this position, b5, which uh, can be uncomfortable for black. So uh, black probably uh, try to avoid that and play c6. So now b5 is not possible, but this plan, uh, you know, it's still possible. Uh, however, we have queen on b1. We have queen on b1, but there is now very, very strong move in this position, which uh, maybe it's not easy to find, by, but feel free to pause the video and try to find a very strong continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay. So uh, queen on b1 was played and that was of course preparation for e4, but e4 actually can be played now and look how powerful is this move is. So the threat of course is e5 and forking the um, minor pieces. Uh, so d takes on e4 and now knight on g5. This is the continuation we are looking for. Now look at this. This is a very strong attack on f7 and now of course uh, e takes on d3 is impossible because queen f7 and picking up the bishop and now there is the threat this is one threat of course forking the uh, king and the queen but also there is another threat to pick up the rook and of course both of them uh, can be stopped so uh, this is why in this position uh, knight g5 queen c7 would have to be played and then knight c on e4 uh, bishop on h2 with check king h1 uh, knight on e4, bishop on e4, bishop f4, and after exchanging um, the pieces here, uh, bishop h7 with check, king f8, and actually white has a pretty strong attack. The, the pieces are very, very um, active, and black pieces are, you know, hidden and then they can't do anything. So now a uh, bishop on g6 would be very, very strong. And if f takes on g6, then we would have knight h7 with check. King e7 is the only move. And now rook c on e1 with check. King d7, otherwise losing the rook. Rook e8, uh, king e8, and now queen g8 and this attack is extremely strong king d7 and now a knight f8 with check now king d6 uh, because otherwise there is the the fork so uh, king on d6 queen e6 king c7 queen e7 and now a knight d7 and the fork anyway so uh, white would of course win so very very dangerous uh, situation if of course white decide to play e4 very very strong move however queen on b1 was played so preparation for e4 and here we have bishop on c8 
uh, black should develop uh, you know faster the pieces because these pieces are totally not active uh, very passive pieces and um, playing move like a bishop on uh, c8 definitely very risky business knight b on d7 could be played and then um, it's forced variation actually uh, white can win the pawn e4 and d takes on e4 knight takes on e4 knight takes on d4 bishop uh, takes on e4 knight f6 and now just exchanging the pieces picking up the pawn and that would be the position which is of course uh, slightly better for white but black have at least you know quite active pieces and this isolated pawn um, it's not easy to to defend so uh, black of course can um, block this piece and then attack it so uh, would have a chance um, to still continue this game uh, however as i said we have a bishop on c8 so now all these pieces are on the uh, on the eighth rank and here we have e4 as planned d takes on e4 knight takes on e4 knight takes on e4 bishop takes on e4 and h6 so now uh, this move actually is not possible anymore uh, and um, and also it was not possible um, as well here after d takes on e4 it was not possible here because now there is no threat because the queen is no longer on b3 um, so this was not possible this is why uh, we got uh, h6 this variation and here we did of course didn't take on c6 actually uh, taking on c6 not really great um, because after knight c6 and rook takes on c6 bishop b7 and uh, rook on c3 black would have very very active position probably even slightly better position and would have um, a very pleasant game uh, so we have rook f on d1 now um, the idea of this move is um, if the knight go on e5 and for example black want to exchange then uh, this rook would watch at the at the queen so that would be uh, some discovered attack so black would have to be very very careful uh, now we have rook a7 so um, defending the the seventh rank but also uh, black now can double the rooks or uh, try to defend um, the c6 pawn we have knight on e5 as planned and now rook c7 h3 h3 it looks like very slow move but um actually uh black doesn't have any plan here and don't have much possibilities of playing so h3 is prophylactic move of, of course giving some breathing space for the king uh, and here we have queen on h4 so activating the queen uh, so this x-ray is not longer needed so rook on e1 uh, moving the rook to the um, open uh, file and now we have rook c on e7 and here samuel shackland probably should play bishop on e6 so continue development and and try to be as active as possible so for example queen on d3 and bishop d5 that would be um, a very nice position for example bishop on h7 king h8 knight c4 so um, attacking the the bishop uh, rook c on e7 picking up this bishop but black actually can play exchange the pieces and after exchanging the pieces queen e7 could uh, you know uh, make a double attack on the minor pieces knight f7 queen f7 and white is better but black still still in the game uh because because wh white has extra pawn but black are quite active here so would have some chances uh however rook c on e7 was played and this makes um one problem this cause one problem and very important problem so now actually you know feel free to pause the video and find the winning combination for white uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? 
So this this is why this game was chosen to be the you know um, the best game of the first round. We have a bishop on h7 with check, king f8. If king h8, actually we would have knight f7, uh, rook f7, rook on e8, and that would be a pretty much disaster. Rook f8, rook f8, bishop f8, and white stands much better. So definitely not an option, so a uh, king actually has to be moved to f8. And now the another great move, rook on e4. And now this queen actually can move um, only to f6 or h5. Uh, if h5, then we would have bishop on g6. Very powerful move, attacking the queen. So uh, not my, much choice, f takes on g6 and now g4 a uh, queen has to take on h3 and now rook on e3 actually trapping the queen uh, if queen is moved to h4 uh, so so queen has to be exchanged uh, if queen goes to an um, h4 and uh, then we would have fork and you know win that queen so uh, king h5 was not an option this is why Queen f6 was played by Samuel Shankland. Uh, and here we have another um, strong move, rook and f4. And look at this. Uh, if queen moves now to g5, it's impossible because now h4, queen h5, and now queen g6, what a move. This would be, this would be so wonderful if, if it happened in the game. Queen g6 and then checkmate. Um, with knight that 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 is uh, you know pretty awesome so in this position of course uh, knight has to be taken it's it's actually forced uh, and now rook takes on f6 and bishop takes on f6 so exchange the queen for the, the rook and the minor piece uh, and here we have bishop on f4 uh, bishop g5 so pinning this um, this bishop on f4 now the rook would be under attack but now if white actually play bishop on b8 then we would have bishop on c1 bishop on d6 and bishop f4 can be played and of course uh, bishop can't be taken uh, because white would have you know attack on the queen and the king so uh, not an option uh, bishop would have to take on e7 rook on e7 and yes white stands better but black still have with pair of bishops some uh, some playing chances uh, so um, we did actually played much more precise move bishop on d6 pinning the rook um, and now we have g6 if bishop on c1 it also doesn't work queen c1 bishop on e6 and now um bishop on e4 attacking the um the pawn uh, and now rook c8 defending uh, and now queen f4 so attacking the knight so knight has to be moved but now queen f3 and attacking this weakness on c6 and of course winning the game so it doesn't really work this is why g6 was played trapping the bishop uh, but white actually just take um, on g6 and now black still can't take it's 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 different situation but for the different reasons and uh, now rook also can't be taken because queen c1 f g6 and now queen would take on h6 king f7 queen h7 with check king e6 uh, queen g6 with check and uh, king d7 and bishop b8 and uh, white have extra three pawns so of course um easy win so uh that would not work as well this is why f takes on g6 was played and now queen g6 knight d7 so um, developing but it's already too late now we have rook c3 and in this position actually a grandmaster samuel shankland resigned the game uh, and he resigned the game because uh, he can do nothing against um, rook on f3. Knight on f6 is the actually 
the only move and after rook on f3 bishop e6 so uh just controlling bringing the extra defender uh rook f6 and after exchanging uh, this bishop would be uh you know um handy on f7 and queen h6 with check king g8 and now actually bishop e7 is enough rook e7 and queen takes on c6 and of course uh, white winning um, easily that game so this is why in this position actually after um, uh, lifting the rook on c3 uh, black just resign okay so if you like this video please press like and if you don't like for some reason press unlike leave the comment if you if you want to see another games from uh, Prague Chess Festival 2020 I follow them all but if you have some you know favorite game or favorite player just let me know and I will cover that game as well and if you want to see another games from um, this Prague Chess Festival 2020 uh just subscribe click click the bell button and you're gonna be fine you're not gonna miss any any content okay so thanks for watching and see you in the next one